I'm just going to take a few minutes this morning uh, to encourage you, and I heard someone say sure back there, Betsy, you will, you will pay for that. Uh, for the last several weeks, we have, uh, obviously in months, we have been chasing after the hero challenge and really uh, looking and aligning our hearts to what God's called us to be through his compassion, through his grace, through his example of showcasing and walking and guiding and navigating in every miracle and every story and every uh, part of his life that he gave, he commended us and gave to us the opportunity to participate in becoming the heroes that he's called us uh, to be and to do. I believe that wholeheartedly, that every single one of us inside of us is greatness, because God says uh, in his word in Jeremiah 29, 11, that he knows the plans that he has for you and I. He knows them. And I mean, w- when he says he knows them, you probably should count, count on those words, that he probably knows what he's talking about. Um, but he knows the plans, and those plans are for good. I mean, how many of you have, have ever questioned that, that God had good plans for your life? <laughs> I would say quite a few of us, maybe we grew up hearing it, or maybe a situation takes place, a, a turn in the road, so to speak, or maybe a, a shift in what we know, and all of a sudden, we're, we're, we're back to questioning that, right? There, there, something looks not good, and so all of a sudden, because what we see with our eyes, what we hear with our ears, seems to not necessarily be coinciding with the words that God spoke over our lives. But that doesn't change the reality of what uh, God has said about you and I, right? I mean, regardless of the circumstances that surround us, and we see it reflected over and over and over again in Scripture, regardless of what those circumstances may be, the truth of the matter and the thing that we can anchor our lives on is the reality that God has good things in store for us, right? And I don't care how young you are, I don't care how old you are, I truly believe it in my heart that our best days are yet ahead of us. And our responsibility is to what? To be believing believers. Not believers that believed, but to be believing believers who participate in grasping a hold of and saying and bringing our lives in alignment and our thoughts in alignment and our words in alignment with the reality that God has good things in store for us. Are you with me? And I think it's important Obviously, now more than ever, as uh, we announced last week, some some changes that are going to be taking shape here uh, with E3 Church and a complementary partnership that's going to be taking place uh, with uh, Gateway Church here in uh, in Scottsdale. And God is bringing two families together. It feels like a marriage, but Preston's a dude, and so am I. So let's maybe not think about that because he's a great guy, and I'm excited Uh, for what's ahead, but I know that it is a little bit nerve-wracking in making any type of change or anything that is outside the norm. Are you with me? It's a little bit hard. But mark my words, actually mark God's words, God knows the plans that he has for us, amen, Amen. and they are good. Now, I asked a question earlier, and hopefully you, you participated in obeying me, I'm just kidding, in asking somebody else, when was the last time they experienced turbulence, and for me, it was just a couple of weeks ago, and uh, I had the chance, I was flying uh, out to a conference in LA, and I was on my way back, and um, as I was getting on this absolutely just disgustingly full flight, um, I was looking for any seat, you know, that was available that, I'm, I'm sort of broad, so, you know, if you put three of me in a row, it's just not going to be, not going to be a pleasant experience, and so I spotted a small child sitting in a middle seat with his mom, and I was like, that's for me. That is for me. And so I, uh, and also after I sat there, I thought, this might be a bad idea. Um, but I, since I've had my kids screaming on airplanes, I realized I could handle it, and uh, he wasn't a screaming kid anyway. But we're on the plane, and uh, I've experienced some turbulence before. I mean, coming into Dallas, uh, when we lived in Oklahoma, oftentimes there would be some gust of wind, and we'd drop like you know, it would felt like tens of thousands of feet from the sky, and oh, just especially in those little puddle jumpers, those are the worst, man, but we were not in a puddle jumper, we were in a big 747, and uh, I don't know what was happening, I don't know what the pilot had been drinking, I'm not sure, but I'm just telling you, for about like 10 minutes, it just got rocky, and you know those moments, every time you fly, 
no, how, no matter how amazing it is to fly, you just are like, okay, this, you know, do you, ever, do you ever feel that way? And you're like, okay, this is it. This is it. I mean, I've always really not wanted to know what it would be like to plummet through, you know, all this steel and metal from the sky, but it, it was those kind of drops. And what was, what was neat about it <clears throat> was the, the young child who was next to me, every time I was like, I'm sitting in my chair, and every time, whoom, I'm like, ah, and uh, this child is looking at me, and he's like, ha, 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 and I am thinking to myself, I mean, and if I didn't have that reaction every time, we just kept dropping. And he had the same reaction. And then his mom looks over at me, and she's laughing at me. And I'm like, do you guys know something I don't know? Uh, are you guys cool with crashing airplanes? Have you done this before or whatever? But anyway, it was an, a memorable, turbulence experience. Now, Many of you know that in the airplane, uh, one of the things I hope that that pilot was trying to do was to get above the turbulence, right? To get above the clouds and to get above that weather and, uh, and be able to, uh, to, to get into the clear sky so that it wouldn't feel so bad. And so this morning, I want to, to navigate us out of, and it doesn't matter what turbulent situations you're going through or just some of the changes that are taking place. I want to continue on the topic of really challenging ourselves to become the heroes that God's called us to. And today, I, I want us to sort of uh, take, take an upward, upward trajectory towards the clear skies because that's going to put us in the perspective where God allows us to see over the top of the turbulence. He said in Isaiah that my thoughts are higher than your thoughts and my ways are higher than your ways. Have you ever doubted that one? <laughs> right? I mean, absolutely you have. I'm just answering for you because um, I've been to your house. And uh, anyway, you and I, whenever anything happens, our first inclination is to expect the worst. It's, it is. It's to expect that everything's going down, everything's going under, or what in the world is going to happen. It's just kind of a natural way that our brain works. And I believe that the Bible is given to us to be able to reform our reactions, to recondition our reflexes, so that we can uh, get on board with and open up our hearts to what God's perspective is on the situation. Because, once again, he's got a plan. I always like to say, you know, don't be the, the girl in the green jacket, which doesn't mean anything to any of you, um, unless you've been around for a little bit. But, you know, the Rocky movie, if you've ever seen it, when uh, Sylvester Stallone is in his sweet gray, gray sweats outfit and he jumps over the bar and starts running. It's really cool if you watch it in the Spanish versions, too. And anyway, that's another story. And uh, anyway, so he's running down the street and everybody just sort of comes out of everywhere. Okay, you know, and they're running by. I think that was the Spanish version I just went with. But anyway. <laughs> Everyone starts to chase and follow him, and then he gets to the steps, right, where he's running up in Philadelphia, and there's this, there's this, this off in the picture, and I've often shown this video of this girl in this green jacket. She just sort of runs up the steps, and, and I always say, you can imagine if she, you know, told her friends and family, hey, listen, there's this awesome new movie that I'm starring in. You won't believe it. It's incredible, and her friends are like, oh, wow, we didn't even know. What's, what's happening? And she says to them, well, yeah, it's this movie that just came out. What's the title? It's called Rocky, and her friends are like, Sylvester Stallone? No, no, no. It's, it's about me. And, and they're like, what? Yeah, let me show you. And she shows them that sort of pass, or that, that little clip right there where she's running up the steps, and she's like, and her friends would just be like, you are so whack. You know, you, there's something wrong with you. But in reality, you and I, we live our lives pretty much like that. We live our lives thinking that this right here is all about us. And it's very easy when circumstances begin to get turbulent that you and I tend to that picture that perspective more than ever, because we honestly start to believe that it's all about us. And I think there's something refreshing about understanding that it, it isn't actually about us, that we are a part of a grand redemptive plan that's taking shape. And if you, you have lived for a certain period of time, you realize that time really does go by very quickly, doesn't it? I mean, how many of you you may be over 50 years of age, and you've experienced and seen a lot, but, you know, I've got a birthday coming up tomorrow. Plug for Brad's birthday. <laughs> Sorry. And I'm about to be uh, uh, 38 years old, and I'm thinking to myself, wow, that is, uh, you know, that is gone by really quick. I mean, my kids have shot up, and, 
just things have happened, but fortunately I got to go to John Stumbo's 60th birthday, and I realized that it's really not that bad. Just kidding, John. Just kidding. <laughs> and I'm sure he would say the same thing. We got a chance to, to, to find out a little bit about his upbringing, which was a lot of fun, and apparently he, uh, he had some chickens, and I mean, it was literally Old MacDonald had a farm was written about John Stumbo, I think. But uh, it goes by pretty quick. But if we recognize that this situation that we're in isn't about you and I, and the difficulties that we face, we can face them because there is a bigger, grander picture. And today I want to talk about being a, a higher purpose player, if you will. That there is something that God desires for you and I to do, and in order for us to rise above the storms and the turbulence and the change and all that's going on, it requires a few things of us, and the first one is a higher purpose player knows who they are in Christ, and they know what God has called them to be about. Now, this has become more and more apparent, and I didn't let our band members know today, but obviously I have some deep-seated emotions, and Change is, is definitely something that I'm not super excited about. And I've had the pleasure of walking through change at my place of work. That has been horrendous. I'm just going to state it. Calls recorded, but whatever. Horrendous. Have you ever been through change at work that is horrendous? Where, where there's no conversation, no communication, and boom, out of nowhere, and people making decisions. I'm not stating that that happened at my work or not, but basically where decisions are made, and nobody had any perspective, and now it's affecting everything in such a significant way, and then you're coming, they're coming to you to find out you know, what's happening, and you're like, what's happening with you? What did you do? What decisions did you make before this conversation? And obviously with our changes that have, uh, have really been taking shape for, I believe, years, and what God's doing, where he's aligning us, and how God speaks, and, you know, you know, it's really neat to have and understand that the Holy Spirit is real and active in our lives, and he comes along to be an encouragement, to be a guide, and, uh, and so he's been, uh, not an audible voice, but I've been hearing sort of some whispers of things that God's been putting in my heart as it relates to myself, you, us as a church. You know, I gave you those four words a little while ago, alignment, assignment, you know, re refinement and fulfillment. And, and it's neat and it's, it's an encouragement. But as I sat up here today, I mean, I just about just started crying. And then uh, I, I just held it in because I'm kind of one of those tough guys. But <laughs> just joking. One of the things that is so incredible that helps us in this time to be a higher purpose player is to know God's calling. What's God called us to do? And not, not my idea, but what did, what did he say? And each of us, we come to know who we are in Christ through scripture, not through our ideas. We come to know his plan and purpose by recognizing and watching what Jesus was about and what Jesus did. How many of you know that Jesus was about people? Yes. How many of you know that when we get to heaven, even though the streets of gold, or excuse me, the streets will be paved with gold and there'll be all kinds of pearls, in my estimation, I, I, that's all neat and pretty and we could talk about it and you know, we could have some theological discussions about it. But in reality, the thing that most excites me is about people that are going to be there, and there's going to be a party and an ovation. And the thing that excites me about church is the same thing. Like, it's not buildings and chairs and programs, but you know what I'm excited about most? It's people. You know what God's excited about in his heart, about when groups of, of people who follow after him get excited about? They get excited about people, and they open their hearts up to his purpose. And so we begin to know who we are in Christ, and it allows us to rise above any type of change because we can trust, A, that God has good things in store for us, and B, that he has a calling on our lives. And that calling in that story that you have, we talked about it last week, right? You have to own it. Even, it, it could be messy, it, could be, it could, could be something that sometimes we're not proud of or ashamed of, but I tell you what, when you start to walk in your identity in Christ, then the old stuff that you've been through, 
honestly becomes the trash that God turns into a treasure to be able to showcase to other people who are in the midst of similar trash that need that trash to become a treasure too. Did you get that? They need that. It's why we have to own our story. That's why we, it, we, I believe God empowers us to walk out, walk out that identity so that we're not ashamed. And we realize, yes, some of you may have stories where you have not even made one mistake, and that's a beautiful story too. But there's others who, whose story doesn't look like that. <laughs> there's others who are still in the midst of walking through that, Right? A lot of us are still in the middle of that. And that's, that's what's so cool about a church community. And, and that's why I believe that God, you know, Jesus talks about that he came for the sick. He, he was called to those who were hurting and, who, and those who were broken. That a church should not be a place that's just filled with a bunch of, you know, people who've got it all together. But you've got people all at different levels that hang out together. And, and come together and, and are able to assist each other in transitions of life to come around and to encourage and to take the gifts and the goods and the stuff that you've been given. I know I said I'd be short, apparently Betsy was right. <laughs> but we take those things and God brings us together and he begins to use it to affect others, right? And so we have to begin to, uh, to, to know who we are in Christ. In John 7, 12, it said, among the crowds, there was widespread whispering about him, Jesus. Some said, he's a good man. Others replied, no, he deceives the people. And probably the greatest thing that you and I have to overcome is that we're, we are not who others say we are. We're not. And some of your stories I know, and I'm going to include myself in, in group A. You know, I always say this. My wife and I have two different stories. Hers was much more of a straight and narrow path. Um, uh, not so much. Just wasn't. And both of our stories are awesome, and both of our stories are special, and both of our stories are about helping other people, and that's how we've always interwoven our lives together, and the same is true of you. And what's difficult sometimes for us in relationship and community is when our story is not as ugly as someone else's story, sometimes we feel a little bit better about ourselves, don't we? We're like, yeah, my story's not that bad. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> not the point, right? The point that God brings together in a church, in a community, in a mosaic of people is that every single one of you have been through some things. And the, the beauty of, of, of a church is people and unwrapping the gifts that God's given them as people begin to own their story and begin to walk out their identity in Christ and trust his love and his goodness. And it's tough sometimes. But we've watched, I think, several months back, we watched the story of the pastor. You guys remember the I Am Second Nate Larkin story? And it was a pretty crazy one. But I know that God desires that we don't hide and wear masks, that we don't come and, and, and fake it that we don't come and feel like we, we've got to be somebody different or something different. I feel like that's the enemy. That's how the enemy attacks people even in the church community. And people start to pull back and they start to act like everything's great. How are you blessed, brother? You know. And it's a detriment. It's a detriment. And I think part of owning our identity in Christ is owning the full story. Are you with me? Yes. Uh, the second thing that allows us to rise above it is to, is to know the importance of timing. I mean, timing is such a, a huge situation. In John 7, 6, Jesus said, my time has not yet come. Like, timing. Like, Ecclesiastes says, in, in every season, there, or, or it, there, there is a season for everything. And when we're trusting God, when we're trying to get perspective over turbulent situations, we, we trust that at the right moment, at the right time, that every every part and every parcel of our life, that that's how God leads us. And right now, it may not feel so good, and the situation emotionally may be tough, and you may not understand everything, but I, let, me, let me just state to you that God's timing is impeccable. His timing is impeccable. I'll speak for myself here, since I'm the only one speaking. Um, I will say that God has been so faithful as I look back at his efficiency and how he's used every part, every mistake, every good thing, every, every bit as I've trusted him. 
And, and at moments when I didn't think something would transpire, and at the right perfect moment when I was just right where I needed to be in my heart, in my life, in situations, God would, would begin to do something. He did that. I mean, I met Noel. I'll, I'll just start with that relationship. I met her when I was 15, and she was 12 years old in church. She was the first girl I ever saw. I gave a teddy bear necklace to, a little Dino dog, you know, stuffed animal, and she was the first girl I ever saw that, I mean, I was like, man, check out the hottie. And, uh, and years later, though, and massive poor relationships later, I mean, I, I, it came full circle around at the time that I had probably gotten to a place where I was just, you know, stronger than I had ever been, where I had just gotten and wrestled through some areas, and I was just like, being able to recognize that God had plan A after I thought he had just plan Z based on mistakes and choices that I had made. But I had gotten full circle there. Then, at that moment, she, she decided to, she, she was on her way out just as we were kindling a relationship. And then, little did I know, but God did, that he would open up a door and I got a phone call from my friend who put me right back where she was at the right moment for this opportunity in this ministry. When I look at how God lines up timing, and I look at following him and trusting him, I'm going to tell you what, man, I've reaped some rewards, okay? <laughs> he's, he's faithful. He's good. He's got good things in store for us. And even though all of a sudden I reconnect and I'm like, oh, this is wonderful, then she's headed out. And I'm like, oh, this is terrible. And then I get a phone call, and I'm like, wow, this is how God likes to operate in your life. And he's about to do that more and more and more. And the question really is, are you ready for it? I mean, because for me, the beauty of following after God is the adventures and the uncertainty of things that I cannot figure out nor could understand. Uh, but I, you know, sometimes I try to, and then I'm just like, ah, eh, forget it. And we've, we've said it before, uncertainty goes by another name, right? Adventure. And you want, I'm answering for you, you want to go where God is leading. You do. It is better, it is safer, it is more secure. And I know right now that uncertainty in situations does not feel so cool, but do not consult your emotions or your feelings. Consult his word. Consult the reality of the relationship that you have with the perfect heavenly father. Amen? Rise above the turbulence and be able to see from his perspective that he has got good things in store for your life. And understand that his timing is better than anything you can work out with your own you know, struggle, energy, effort. It just is. And he has a way of bringing it all together. That job that you're, you're looking for, he's already been at work at it. Something in a situation, which is why we surrender and give it all to him, everything you want. That's why we have to go to him and get his perspective. Otherwise, we're left to our own decision-making capabilities and our own strength to try to piece it together as opposed to trying to get into his vision, into his perspective. And the last thing that allows us to sort of come above it all is, uh, is to know how to finish strong. Finishing strong, like, once again, it is, this whole thing isn't about us. This, this, this whole life, your gifts, they're wonderful. You're awesome. Let me just tell you that. Turn to your neighbor and say you're awesome. You, you have some incredible strengths. You have some incredible gifts. But, but really, in order to finish strong, it, it isn't about you. I mean, God used a donkey and... He's used others, similar <laughs> individuals. All he's looking for is the heartbeat and the heart of individuals who are ready to be used by him. That's why a very, venture out here, it's very difficult when we start to get into a question when turbulence happens and we say, what about me? Because really the best thing that we can do is to say, God, Wherever you lead me, wherever you guide me, 
I know that you're with me and you are gonna take care of me better than I could ever take care of myself, so I'm gonna trust you. So whatever you're in on, I'm in on, and I just know because there is just sort of a, just an effect that takes place when I trust you. And not be worrying about all of the stuff that you're trying to hold so tightly to sometimes. Trust it, I can guarantee you it will be beyond anything and everything that you can imagine. Now I believe that as we are taking some steps forward. I believe that part of the calling, as I said, first and foremost, even in our, our shift that we're gonna be taking here in the next uh, few weeks and the months that lie ahead, that I am in the same place that you are, trusting, trusting God, trusting what he called me to be and what he called me to do, what he called you to be, what he called you to do. I'm trusting. I'm trusting that he's good. I'm trusting that he's faithful. I'm trusting that he's never one time let me down. I'm trusting that I'm a trophy of his grace and I'm here to show forth his glory in his splendor, not mine, right? And so that allows me to just open up my heart and allow him to be on display in my life. And that's what I want us to be. That's what I want us to do is to grab a hold of it so that outside of all of that, we're on top of the perspective just recognizing and so thankful for his grace, It's by grace that we have been saved. Salvation, that word, means every bit of everything you want. Healing, prosperity, joy, peace. It's contained in that word. And our opportunity is to surrender to it and let it come out. And that means that we're going to be walking through getting to know all kinds of unique people. All kinds of unique unique people within our city, all kinds of unique people that God will bring across our paths. And our responsibility is to be higher higher purpose players, right? Higher purpose players to be able to gain and grab a hold of God's perspectives and, and recognize that God is in the business of doing an incredible work. Now, I want to read a couple of things to you and then we will end um, and just have a, have a time of prayer here. But let's, listen to even just from the standpoint of people who are going after something. This is why you and I can't lose sight that God has great things in store for us. And, and we'll put this kind of on, on, on the, uh, the, the simple examples of people who just keep pushing for something great to happen in their lives. Henry Ford, he failed what broke five times before he succeeded. Uh, NBA superstar Michael Jordan was once cut from his high school basketball team. You, you and I, I don't have to go over stories and stories, but when, when we get a supernatural perspective, and we start to press in that God has something great for us, no matter what the circumstances are, we keep pushing and gaining a vision of something beyond ourselves. Now listen to this one, because this one hits home for me. This is uh, John Wesley, who's a renowned pastor, preacher. He, he, he uh, wrote in his diary a couple things that I think are pretty, pretty interesting and give some perspective. Sunday, uh, the 5th of May, preached in St. Anne's, was asked not to come back anymore. Sunday, uh, PM, May 5th, preached in St. Jude's, can't go back there either. Sunday, uh, May 19th, AM, preached in St. Somebody Else's, deacons called special meeting and said I couldn't return. Sunday, May 19th, PM, preached on the street, kicked off the street. Sunday, May 26th, AM, preached in a meadow, chased out of the meadow as a bull was turned loose during service. That hasn't happened to me, but I have been kicked off the street. They threw rocks at me in uh, downtown Phoenix. <clears throat> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> Sunday, June the 2nd, a.m., preached out at the edge of town, kicked off the highway. And then June the 2nd, p.m., afternoon, preached in a pasture, and 10,000 people came out to hear me. You know, if you recognize and, and surrender to the reality that God has something amazing for you, it keeps propelling you. It keeps pushing you. And I will tell you what, it will come to pass. The thing that you desire, but your responsibility is to not let go of it. Your responsibility is to, is to open and to surrender your heart and to say, God, I trust you. I trust you. Amen? Amen. Bow your head and close your eyes with me this morning. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are trustworthy and that we can trust you. We thank you that you love us, that you care deeply about us, that every 
moment, every um, day that we have gone through pain and, and hurt and struggle and confusion and uncertainty, that you have been available and you have been there guiding and stretching and pulling and developing our muscles. And God, I thank you for this church. I thank you for the reality that you have incredible things in store for this church. And that means people. That there are gifts. And there is something in store for, for us in here. And we don't even, we haven't even imagined it, I believe. I believe that there are uh, individuals that you have called us to reach that nobody else sees them the way that you have put it on some people's hearts to see them. And God, their, their best days are yet ahead as they begin to come in alignment with your heartbeat, open up their hearts. God, I thank you for mentors. Thank you for fathers. I thank you for mothers. I thank you for these individuals who have a passion for kids and for seniors and young adults, people who have been broken by divorce and relationships and affairs and hurt, by all kinds of stress and stuff that happens, business leaders that have embezzled and failed. God, that you're stirring our hearts for this city, this place where you've placed us and called us to be. Lord, this morning I'm asking that you would allow us to be the higher purpose players, to see from your perspective, to surrender to your calling, and to listen as you lead, as you guide us, as we begin to take steps into the supernatural reality of your plan and your purpose. This morning, while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you're here this morning, first and foremost, you don't have a relationship with God. You don't know how much he loves you, how much he cares about you, all that he's done for you. His desire is not to change your behavior. His desire is to open up your heart to his love and his goodness so that you could respond to it. He sent his son Jesus to pay a price, to be the penalty and the beginning and the end so that you could be accepted, you could be loved, you could be valued. If you're here and you've never responded to that, would you lift your hand and say, you know what, I want to experience that quality and that type of relationship. Anybody this morning? Thank you. And secondly, if you're here and you say, Brad, it's all good what you're saying, being a higher purpose player, but I'm having a little bit of struggle right now. I'm feeling the weight of some uncertainty and it's heavy and it's tough. It's tough to be able to see. I feel like I, I got one nostril above water and I just, I don't know. And I, I feel the weight of it and I'm not sure. And I just, I can't sleep. I just am, am kind of a wreck. If that's you here this morning, would you lift your hand? Because I believe that God wants to do something supernaturally in your life. Say this out loud with me first. Say, God, thank you for loving me. Thank you for sending your son Jesus to shed his blood, to die on a cross for my sins, to raise from the dead so I could have new life. Thank you for accepting me, all of me. Thank you for loving me. Thank you for making me your child. Let me pray for you guys this morning. Heavenly Father, I thank you that your word does not return void. I thank you that there's power in the spoken word of God. Father, I thank you that your word says that your name is above every name. And at the mention of your name, that mountains of pain and emotional upheaval would crumble. That at your name, Father, that uh, situations that seem so stressful and so difficult would crumble. Father, the pain and hurt of the past would crumble. And right now in Jesus' name, God, I'm asking that situation in each person's life right now who is feeling weight, who is feeling heaviness, I'm asking that you would cause it to crumble. Lord, that you would open up jobs and finances, 
that you would open up purpose and hearts that have carried pain and baggage for long periods of time. Father, I'm asking you to crumble it by the power of the reality of the sacrifice of your son and all that he's done. Not because of us, not because of what we've done, Lord. Father, I'm asking for supernatural change to take place, for phones to ring and jobs and money to come from unexpected places. Why, God? Not because of anything that we've done to earn it, but because of your grace. Father, trophies of your grace. And right now, Lord, I know that you're at work and there's no possible way that we could take credit. But Father, I'm asking for some stories out of this, of the redemptive power and quality of your love and your goodness, that those who are here today that are feeling that weight would be able to come back and say, I have no idea how this happened. Beyond my wildest imagination, Lord, that's your word. Your word says that you came, you sent Jesus so that we would experience life beyond our wildest imaginations. We, we won't settle for anything less. In Jesus' name, everyone said,